All right. The Lord be with you. And welcome into our time of study. Thank you for uh, being here. And it's a great blessing to be able to continue our exploration of the, uh, the, great, the great message that is part of our uh, study of the, the book of Hebrews. So we're going to look at chapter 3 today. But before we do, as always, I invite you to begin with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we look to you now because you are our teacher. You are the one that has built us, and you are the one that will continue to perfect us and finish our faith. We look to you and ask your blessing as we study your word and as we are fed upon your word this day. Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, so as I said, we're going to uh, look to chapter 3, and I've got it divided into a couple of sections. But before I do that, I want to go to a passage I just see right now that this is not the right, uh, it's not 1 Timothy, it's 2 Timothy. And, uh, and I'm just not going to take the time to try to correct that in front of you, but, but I'm correcting it now in front of you. 2 Timothy chapter um, 3, verses 14 to 17, and I'll explain why I'm reading this first of all in just a second. But, uh, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent equipped for every good work. Every week, or at least that's our goal, Pastor Harris and I uh, meet in, as, as just, well, as partners here in this ministry, as the, as the team of, of pastors here in the ministry of Cross Lutheran. And we have been, since we started that, uh, going through the pastoral epistles this was one of our readings, or our reading most recently, and it ties in with what I said was one of the recurring themes of Hebrews, and that was this keep going, this continuing, this um, review it and rehearse it and just get it further embedded in you. So as he and I were talking about that this past week, uh, I thought this would be a good tie-in with with what it is we're doing and why it is we're doing it, and that is the, the idea of continuing. What we have learned, continue to hold on to it, continue to embrace it, continue to deepen in your walk as a follower of Jesus. And that is what Paul says happens, and he says it happens, of course, by the Word of God. As he says in verse 16, I didn't type that for you on your screen, but all Scripture is breathed out by God, all Scripture inspired by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. So that, again, brings us back to why study God's Word? Why spend this time, spend weekly time, daily time sitting at Christ's feet? Because it's His channel one power source for us to be his followers, to grow as his followers, to deepen our walk with him as his followers. So we continue in that and, um, and now get back into then what we hear in Hebrews chapter 3. So as I said, I'll invite you to um, go to Hebrews chapter 3 and we'll look first of all at the first 11 verses. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house ha has, more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later, but Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. 
and we are his house, if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our, in our hope. Therefore, as the Holy Scripture says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for forty years. Therefore, I was provoked with what that generation had, and with that generation, and said, They always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Entering into rest and that rest of God as as not only um, an experience, a phenomenon, but but as a place. That really is the stuff of, of uh, chapter 4. So we will, Lord willing, get into that more uh, deeply next time we meet. For now, however, I like what um, the Hebrews writer says in verse 1. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly father calling, consider Jesus. So the title of our overall study of, of Hebrews, as you know, is looking to Jesus. The focus is on Jesus. Remember right out of the box, Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, in the past, various ways God spoke in these last days. He's spoken us, to us by His Son. And so we focus on Christ. We're looking to Him. Chapter 12 will encourage us. Today, verse 1 of chapter 3 encourages us, consider Jesus. What does it mean to consider Jesus? Uh, it means to focus on Him. Consider Him as opposed to considering anything else and everything else. And so it's an encouragement for you and for me today to be reminded that we don't consider Jesus our last resort as if we are to try every other uh, or exhaust every other option or outlet and then say, well, okay, Lord, I've tried everything else. I might as well try you now. No, we do it first and foremost. We look to him first and only. And as we consider Jesus, then we don't have to go anywhere else because he's Lord. He's living God. He is, as the Hebrews writer says here, the apostle and high priest of our confession. Consider him who was faithful. Jesus was faithful to, to him who appointed him. And we, so we hold fast to him. That's what uh, we're encouraged to do in verse 6 of this first section. To hold fast to him to uh, consider him, to cling to him who appointed, who uh, was faithful in his appointment, if you will, when God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit in eternity knew that this was going to be the way, this was going to be the time. In the past, those past days of God speaking through all kinds of ways and prophets and so on, that the last days it would be God with us. The Lord Jesus, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffering under Pontius Pilate, died, buried, risen from the dead, ascended to heaven. This is the Jesus that we consider. And one of the things we consider is how he was faithful every step of the way, never deferring, never defaulting, never deterring in his road to Calvary and our sacrificial atonement by his vicarious death. Oh, I've thrown some catechetical words at you. Uh, his uh, vicarious in our place atonement and his sacrifice. Christ was faithful in it all. That's part of the rhythm, if you will, of an annual consideration of the passion of Jesus, the Lenten connection that is ours this day and uh, in this season to be reminded how was Jesus faithful. He was faithful to his Father because he knew this was God's appointment. This was God's appointed task. So part of our considering him is we hold on to him. We hold fast to him. 
So that's part of that continuing that Paul said to Pastor Timothy to do. Continue into what, in what you've heard, continue to cling to it, continue to hold on to that that is God's Word and that comes to us in His Word. We hold fast to the Word made flesh. This first section of Hebrews reminds us that Jesus is the faithful Son. Faithful, Christ is faithful over God's house as a Son. <coughs> the builder, the author and perfecter of our faith. Here in a minute we'll talk about a couple of places where uh, where we're reminded of what it is we're being built into. But for now, we're considering how Jesus is that faithful Son building us, building us up into an edifice, if you will, a building uh, for the Lord to His glory. And the way that an edifice is built is by edifying and being built up. So that is what is going on here. There is uh, there's some real doctrinal uh, presentation here or presence here, especially in verse 4, where the Hebrews writer says, For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. So we get a little bit of a, I would call it a catechetical review. Uh, this is first article stuff of the Apostles' Creed of God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. So the builder of all things is God. It's a good point for you and for me today because it's easy for us to uh, experience even in our own, just our own personal sphere, our own personal lives, uh, the feeling that and, and sometimes reality that a portion of our life is coming tumbling down, that the building that we kind of felt like we were uh, safe and sound in and huddling in is, is falling apart at the seams. And, and then in a bigger picture too, nationally, um, as a United States, it can seem like so, like so many of the pillar things, the things that we consider important, um, the unchangeables and immovables seem to be crumbling and moving and, and the intent of so many to, to actually do the destruction and the deconstruction of the building that, uh, that we desire to have and to be grounded in and based on the Word of God. This is a good reminder for you and for me as we consider Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the builder of us, that the builder of everything is God. God remains in control no matter what law is enacted or struck down. God remains in control of us, with us, over us always. We hold fast to that. That's an important point, point for us today. As we consider Jesus, the one who is faithful over God's house as a son. That's verse 6 once again. And we are his house if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our so this continuing 2 Timothy chapter 2, excuse me, chapter 3, um, and now at the beginning considering of Jesus and now this holding fast, this is part of what goes on in us, for us, as we gather around God's Word and as we study it and review it and rehearse it and re-sing it and re-grip the promises of God for us for this day, for tomorrow, for this new day, for this dark time. Whatever the situation, we hold fast to Christ because He is faithful. So it becomes this grip we have on the Lord Jesus isn't based on or all about the strength of our grip. It's the one to whom we cling, to whom we hold fast 
and that's the Lord Jesus who gives us the strength in His Word, in your baptism, fed and supported and nourished by His Supper to do just that, to hold fast. I wanted to run just a little while with this idea, this motif of the building. The builder of everything is God and the, that Jesus is that and that he is doing that. And I <clears throat> am mindful of just two places in Scripture that are really power-packed promises of God about the fact that God is in control and God is doing the building. I invite you to listen along, and if you want to, you can get there. Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. Paul says this, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself, being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In Him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. <clears throat> for those of you who are here, oh, let's see, 11 years ago or so, uh, yeah, 11 to 12 years ago was about the time that we began to uh, not only dream about or talk about, but actually put into motion phase two and the uh, building campaign to build our sanctuary. And the theme for that was this verse, verse 22 of Ephesians 2, in him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by His Spirit. And, and so certainly the parallel was there that uh, we, were, we were being built together as the body of Christ, but then we desired and embarked on our desire and our intention to build together the sanctuary here at Cross Lutheran Church and School. And so we were constantly reminded that it is in Him that we are built. So recall this, remember this, consider Jesus, not ourselves, as the builder. The builder of everything is God. So the, the structure that's here, He enabled us to do that to His glory in His name. It was Him all the way and continues to be Him always. So we glorify Him as we are reminded that God is doing His building. And he will continue to build his kingdom. And Jesus reminds us in Matthew 16, the very gates of Hades itself, hell itself, shall not prevail against the kingdom of God and the message of the gospel. And we are part of that. We are in that body of Christ with, with the strength that God gives us to build on the foundation of the apostles, prophets, Christ Jesus himself, as our cornerstone. And then there's another great place that we've got to go to when, it's, uh, when you're talking about built and being built and so on. And that's what Peter says is, uh, is happening to you and to me. Declared by God to be alive in Christ. And then Peter brings this idea in as well. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. If you're part of our ministry, you know the value, the importance we place on rocks. Uh, members of our church, everybody has been given a rock, and it goes into the plaza area, the cross-shaped stone, uh, cross stone structure filled with rocks. And those rocks have been placed there by each member of the Cross Lutheran family. That is a reminder to us of this very thing, that each of us is part of what God is doing here 
we are being built together into a spiritual house and we use the tangible um, hard as rock stones to remind us first of all that Jesus is the rock upon which we build on Christ the solid rock we stand all other ground is sinking sand and that each of us then you yourselves like living stones are being built up into a spiritual house. What a great reminder that is to be uh, recalling that each and every one of us is a living stone and each and every one of us is part of that body of Christ that God is using to continue to extend His kingdom, to continue to shine the light of His grace and of His forgiveness and of, of His redemption in Jesus. Consider Jesus, the faithful high priest, founder of our faith. In fact, remember our mission statement is that we are one in Christ here, so one in Christ we gather. We are one in ministry here, and so one in ministry we grow, and we are one in mission here. And so one in mission we go. And our vision is that we are building God's kingdom as living stones. That's why I encourage you, and that's what we do as we enter into this time, Sunday by Sunday, day by day, together in the Word of God, to be reminded that it's not about you listening to me, how God is using me as the living stone here, and, uh, and all of you then get to hear about it and uh, hopefully applaud or affirm it because God's doing great things through a couple of people. No, we are building God's kingdom as living stones. Each and every one of us is part of that. There's only one cornerstone, that's Jesus, the author and foundation and perfecter of our faith. There's only one head, there's only one Lord, and we are one in Him, one in the ministry here, one in the mission here of building God's kingdom together. The rule and reign of God here is in His word and sacraments. And through His word and sacraments, we are welcomed into His family forever. And we then, made alive by Christ, living stones, God is using to continue the message of the gospel, to continue to remind people that no matter what may crumble and fall around us, God, the builder of everything, continues to hold on to us, shape, mold, move us, continues to use us as His living stones to build His kingdom in this place. Another section, the final, the final section of of um, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. Take care, brothers. Here's that ongoing reminder and encouragement again to, to keep going. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was He provoked for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Okay, so great little nugget here for you and for me to take with us to be exhorting one another. But first of all, to be exhorted, to take care 
for ourselves first of all. What day is it? Well, before you answer that, we're already told here in the Scriptures. What day is it? It's today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every single day is a day that the Lord has made. Every single day is today. And so, verse 13 says, Exhort one another every day as long as it is called today. So, you're getting exhorted today. You're getting exhorted. That's what we do. We exhort one another today. Um, and all the todays, we're being reminded to take care. Take care, we're told. And hold on and cling to. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an unbelieving evil heart that would cause you to fall away. Hence, our continual study of the Word of God, our review, our uh, repeating, our um, just going over and encouraging and being encouraged all of the time today. Remember that, uh, that phrase that was a lot more popular a couple, probably a couple of decades ago by now? Remember carpe diem? Remember what that uh, means? It means seize the day. Seize today. That's what we're doing. We are uh, exhorting each other again today. And as long as it's today, that's what we are going to be about. That's what we are going to um, continue to hold on to. So, so this is the day, because it's called today, this is the day to, to consider Jesus, to, co to hold fast to what it is we believe, to be reminded that we are living stones and that God is using us. And then, here's the powerful piece. That enlivens us. That encourages us. And it encourages us to consider Jesus and to encourage others to do the same. It encourages us to hold fast to God and His Word ourselves. And then to be about encouraging others. Hold on. Hold fast. God is with you, and He will never leave or forsake you. Why? Because He said He does that every day that's called today. He's here. So be encouraged in that and be encouraging in holding fast, in continuing to consider Jesus, not just think about Him or remember that He once was, but remember who He is for us now in His Word and Sacrament and be blessed and strengthened as we continue boldly, faithfully, resting and trusting in Him and encouraging others to do the same. Let's close with a blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of His Spirit be with you all and always. Amen. God's blessings on your day and on this new week, and I look forward to being with you next time.